this is dana welcome to my channel i'm back with my next craft fair idea what i'm making today is baked potato bags and i am calling my baked tater bags um just because here in the south we eat taters um but anyway i thought that that would be a cute name um i just went ahead i made myself a tag for it and this is what i put on my tag i looked it up on pinterest and i found many many people with different written instructions and i kind of took a little bit of everything and kind of made it my own but this is what i come up with i think i'll also include maybe on the back i might put that this product is made with 100 percent cotton fabrics because you want to make sure if you're putting it in the microwave for a very long time you want to make sure you're using 100 percent cotton fabrics so this is what it looks like i attached the little tag on top and this is how i'm going to display mine um, but this is how the bag looks like it kind of has a little flap it opens up you put your potatoes inside it seals over and you microwave fun and good as that okay let me show you how i made this so i am using let me get this bag out here. I am using 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton thread, and I am using 100% cotton natural batting. I'm using this Pellon Rabin Zap. I did get this bag for $5.99 at Joann Fabrics. And I'm thinking that I might order online. I did see where I could order like a bolt for 10 yards on there for like $23, and that would be more cost effective. Um, we'll see. We'll see how many I decide to do. Um, but anyway, I did see some online when I googled it. So, on Amazon. But anyway, this is what I'm using. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is you're going to take your cotton fabric and you're going to lay it face up. And I'm doing mine 10 inches wide by 20 inches long. And um, you can make these any, any width or any size that you want. But I'm doing 10 by 20s. And I'm going to make sure that my pieces are lined up nice and straight on top of each other. And then I'm going to make sure my batting is all lined up as well. If I've cut it a little longer, no worries. I'll trim it off in the end. So I think I cut it a little bit longer, but I'm not worried about it at all. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I get this all lined up. And it's like this. I found using this 100% cotton fabric or the batting, it does kind of, it kind of moves a little bit on me because, you know, you can't adhere it down or anything. But, you know, just pin it in place. It'll be good. Okay. So I'm going to start it off just like this. Get it as lined up the best that I can. And then I'm just going to take my pins and pin around. Got my trusty little ironing board over here. My iron's nice and heated up. I put a power strip here on my desk so I don't have any cords hanging down and out of my way. I'm loving it. I love this ironing board. If you have not seen my tutorial on how I made this little tabletop DIY ironing board, I think maybe if you're interested, just give it a watch because it it was it's really been a great asset. I love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin this down, and then I'm gonna take you over to my sewing machine. Let's get this one, and there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna finish pinning. And we'll go to the sewing okay, machine. So we are over here at the sewing machine. I'm gonna start at this end. I'm going to start about halfway through my the middle here because you want to make sure you leave about a three inch opening so you can turn this in half, turn this inside out. So I'm just going to start right over here at the end. I'm going to back stitch. I changed my needle because I was hearing a little knocking. Make sure that you occasionally give yourself a fresh needle if you are new to sewing. You know, net fresh needles are good to have. I probably should change my needles a little more often than I do. Sometimes your needle gets bent. Okay, I'm just using a two and a half stitch length. 
as I normally do. I'm just going to sew right all the way down. I'm using the pressure fit to the edge of my fabric as a guide. Had my little grandson here last night. I don't know if he wanted to go home. He was getting pretty comfy. But I think he enjoyed himself. He went home with a few goodies. He said he got up today and thought he was going to get to go shopping again. I thought, no, no shopping. You've shopped last night. Got yourself a treat. movement in your fabric don't stress over it you can square this up in the end no big deal it's all good my batting is staying where it needs to be. I think that um, I've been to like swap meets and stuff like that before. There's one here in Texas. It's at Canton and it's like, like um, they call it first Monday and every every weekend that has a first Monday of the month that's when they do it and Y'all, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's so much walking because it's huge. But I have seen someone there selling potato bags. So I remembered when I saw those. And I thought, you know what? I can do that. Uh, and so here I am. I'm on to the last corner. Remember to make sure you leave your opening. I stopped right here. I'm just going to stop about right there. Back stitch so it stays in place. And let's get this turned inside out. Get those scissors. Okay. I'm going to get this other thread trimmed up. And let me show you what's next. So here we are, and on the ironing board here. This thing works fabulous. Don't have to bring out no big old ironing board. Cluttering up my craft room. And I've had people ask me, what kind of iron is that? It is steam fast. I got this at Walmart for like nine bucks. Um, yeah, it works wonderful, y'all. It works even better than the big iron I have. I'm very impressed. And y'all, I did see it when I went to Joanne Fabrics. I did see this iron. I think it was a little bit different brand. Y'all, it was $39. So I'm really proud that I found this one. I think that it's great. I can actually put water in this one too. And um, yeah, to make it a steam iron. And um, yeah pretty happy with it. I like it a lot. And it's really a great tabletop iron. Okay, I'm going to flip that over. I like to make sure it's really good pressed. And this, and this uh, cute fabric, oh my goodness. I know it's not potatoes. Y'all, I couldn't find any potato fabric. <laughs> but, you know, whenever Hancock Fabrics used to be in business, um, yeah, I used to could find it there, but I haven't found any. So, well, it's okay. I'll just use fun prints. I want to make sure that this opening down here is nicely iron pressed because I want it to sew up really nicely right over here. Okay, it's looking good. Let's take it back to the sewing machine. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure you see what I'm seeing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by closing up this end 
where I left it open so I could sew, where I could turn it. And I'm gonna sew all around the edge. walking foot on a while ago because you know this gets pretty thick when you're using this much layers but I think I'll be okay Okay, so now I've got it sewed all the way around the edges. And so let me show you how we need to sew it next. Okay, so now I've got my I've got my fabric, my batting, everything all sewed together. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one end and I'm gonna fold it up about seven inches. You can do longer than that if you want. Let me just measure on my mat here. Let me go up a little bit more. Okay, that is about, this is about seven inches, okay? So then what you're going to do is you're gonna make sure that's centered. Fold this over where it overlaps about two inches, just like this, okay? So I'm gonna line it up on my mat. I wanna make sure that my things are all lined up. Make sure everything looks pretty even. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Clover Wonder Clips and I'm going to clip the sides in place. That way they, that way I know where to sew it. I told y'all this was so simple. Couldn't have been any easier. Okay, I'm gonna hold these layers here where the flap is. And get these in here. And one at the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is take it to the sew machine. We're gonna sew a seam all the way down each side, back stitching at the beginning and end. And on the other side, and then we'll be done with our sewing. How easy is this? So let's finish it up. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna back stitch and I'm using my down feature. Just hold it all in place. Now these are pretty thick layers, so go slow y'all. Cause it's a lot of layers we got going here. I'm trying to try to go over where the seam is. So once you're over that slump, slowly finish going down slowly to the end. And on the back stitch. And up the end. Now I'm gonna sew up the other side and then we'll be done. 
Let me get this trimmed, and there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew the other side slowly, the same way, let's see, I think I'll go this way. Start down here, carefully. And I'm gonna do a little back stitch down here. And here I go slowly. Slowly over the slot with a lot of layers, y'all. Now I'm gonna make sure this is smoothed out and roll it on to the end. Back and back stitch, and then roll it on out the end. How easy is this? Couldn't have been more simpler, y'all. Could not have been more simpler. So now, let's take a look okay, at it. Okay, so here's our final product. Here you can put your potato down inside. I think it turned out pretty well. Super cute fabric. And all I'm gonna do to display mine is fold it in half, attach my little tag that I made, I am going to put, this is made with 100% um, cotton products. I will be adding in a super pretty ribbon. And this ribbon I, is one I got from bbcrafts.com. This is 3 eighths of an inch. And there you go. So let's talk pricing what we think that we should, what you think that we should sell these for. So my bowl koozies, I sell them for $8 and they sell well. Um, so I'm, I'm doing eight on those. Um, and so I'm thinking that I probably use probably about the same amount of, well, maybe a little bit more product on these. So I'm thinking maybe nine or 10 on these. Um, eight or nine. I'm thinking I have to really think about it and break down how much I've spent. I'm only using um, my buy half yard cuts of fabric and I have a little bit left over from from the end of it. So maybe I might have a couple inches left over. So I'm really not using that full half yard cut. And so anyway, and then my batting, my bag of batting, I think I'm going to get probably, I'll probably get six or eight potato bags. Um, out of out of this yeah I think I'll have eight out of this because I've already cut up the other ones and I've already got two and I think I've got six more strips so I can get eight out of there so I'm thinking that probably maybe eight dollars maybe nine dollars would be a good price for the potato bags let me know what you think I've never sold them before so um, I'd really like to know um, I'd like to know if you've sold them before maybe tell me how much you've sold them for and how well they did um, so anyway, yes, yeah, this is super cute. I'm super excited about having another um, craft, another sewing project idea out on my craft tables. So anyway, and like I said, I am going to um, also include my bowl koozies. Again, I'll do a refresher on that if y'all need that. So I will do one of those as well. I and mean, then I am going to include it on my craft fair series coming soon. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I really enjoyed making this. I think it's super cute. Super, super cute. It really is. Okay, so before I go, I have a shout out, y'all. Okay, <laughs> the other day I did a video about um, how they have the new Dollar Tree tablets back in stock up at Dollar Tree. And so anyway, there is one post from that day. Oh my goodness, I loved it so much. So Theola Kim wrote me and said, well, Miss Dina, thank you. I was minding my own business, cleaning my office craft room when my phone dinged to let me know that you had uploaded a post. I stopped cleaning because I knew that this was an important post. I have been, I have been looking for those little notebooks for over a year at the Dollar Tree and I was, and they were not carrying them anymore. I jumped in my car and immediately drove to the nearest Dollar Tree. OMG, there were none to be found in the area that you recommended. So I went to the stationary area and there were none to be found. But I did not give up. 
I looked under every calendar, notebook, and stuff, other stuff, and wow, they were hidden in the back of the shelf, covered by stuff I did not need. I was so excited that my face could not stop smiling. I know too much info. Thanks again. One very happy sub. Oh my goodness, you made my day with this post. I loved it so much. When I read it, I told my husband, and he goes, what are you talking about? And I read it to him, and he thought it was the greatest thing. He just said, that is so good. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you, ma'am, thank you so much for writing me. I really appreciate it, and thanks for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed them. Anyway, y'all, I hope that you have enjoyed this baked tater bag. Oh, it, my goodness, it's going to be a good addition. Not really sure how many I'll do. I might do 10 or 15. I might do like 10 or 15 just to see how they do. And if they do more than the next craft fair, I'll do more. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you guys have an awesome afternoon and you'll have a great day. Bye.